Hello everyone and welcome back. Today's video is looking into the power of the Wave Splitter as Osek this season and why you should be using it along with Nezrak Sin. As Elemental Worlds have been removed from the game and are now replaced with a newly updated Charge with Light system, it has been made even more easier to equip all the power on the fly for users and teams. This means exotics such as Star Eaters and Wave Splitters in a way have received a massive buff with how active you can create orbs of power to block their effects. So I'm going to show you why combining Wave Splitter and Nesrax together will give you one of the best builds available for the Void Warlock users and also Void users who want to use it for their Titans and Hunters. With today's showing you can get a fast ability regen just from the end Void kills and over 126% damage buff for Wave Splitter via max output, debuffs and surges applied. A simple setup that can do a lot of damage in a short time frame as long as you're able to create orbs as demanded. To start, you're going to want to have Feed the Void so each time you defeat a target with Void abilities, you will get Devour. Then you want Charlie Your Gods where upon creating a Rift, you'll cast a Void Soul. Damaging a target with Void Soul will drain them and give back Grenade, Melee, Class ability and Health for the user. Although Chaos Accelerant is a good choice to use instead of Charlie Your Gods, I've decided not to opt into the following because of how crazy things can get when using this in higher difficulties. We are able to proc Devour and have it as a constant heal for the user when using our weapons, but even this in most content won't be enough solely because the enemy numbers at times. Having a Void Soul as backup will allow us to slow down large groups of combatants when we need to, while also getting heals from it and the rift provided. You can swap this out if you don't want to use the following, but I've found that this allows me to play more aggressive and fully use Wave Splitter at max power. Fragments used are Echo Remnants where your Lingering Grenade duration are extended, Echo Cessation, Finisher Final Blows creates a burst of void damage that causes nearby targets to become volatile, Echo of Undermining which provides users a 15% grenade debuff, and Echo of Harvest where defeating a weakened target with Precision Final Blows creates an aura power and void breach. Both Remnants and Undermining are a go-to for the build as we want to make sure our grenades are putting in the work but also Echo of Harvest will aid us further in terms of getting us as much orbs of powers as possible. Not only will this allow us to get our super up quickly, but it also means that once Wave Splitter is overcharged, we can consistently create orbs of power via Void Siphon, Firepower, and now Harvest as well. For the mods and stats section, as we are using Nesrax Sin, which will provide us with a 300% additional base grenade and melee regeneration rate, and a 200% additional base class and super regeneration rate, we will have room for flexibility towards the stats. Now I would say that since all of our abilities are going to be used one way or another, a tier 7 to 8 for discipline, recovery and strength is a good place to start with. The main stats of course will be resilience and discipline being used the most, and from here I would say that tier 10 for resilience for a 30% damage reduction will be good to have for aggressiveness that we'll be playing with. If you wish, you can add on the dampener mods for reducing splash damage from enemies, which may be required depending on how you play with the build. I've noticed at times that I didn't actually need a mod and was doing just fine, but other times I was getting killed quite a lot via the splash damage alone. You may need to play around just see how this works for you. For your discipline, I would recommend a tier 7 to 8 as the cooldown rate for your grenades are already pretty high to start with. Ideally, our grenades will trigger fights first so that we can create an orb of power and from here this will overcharge a weapon and allow us to push forward from there. A grenade kickstart and bomber mod are the only two requirements you'll need for the discipline side of things as everything else can be easily covered through normal means. It's just like a controversial whole build where as long as you have an exotic to rely on that will give you back ability energy, you don't actually need to add on further from there. This will leave you room to add on whatever necessary mods that best fit the build straight after, so times 2 surge mods for that constant 17% weapon damage buff. Going forward, you want to also add on the charged up mod, time dilation mod, and times 2 void or harmonic cipher mods so you can overall sustain your armor charges through standard gunplay. Also, add on the firepower mod so you can create orbs of power via grenades alone, and this overall will make you an orb factory. After this, you're then best to add on mods that will allow you to get Trace Rifle Ammo back as the following weapons do burn through ammo quickly. Special Ammo Finder mod increases the drop chance of special ammo and kills. Harmonic Reserves times 2 for increasing the amount of void ammo you can carry, and Special Finisher for generating special ammo on finisher kills 
for the cost of three armor challenges are generally what I went with overall. Now lastly the weapons being used will be the wave splitter exotic. The fallen weapon throughout the season has always been good but lacked the ability to create all the power consistently to retain its damage. Although they were usable before the big mod update, they still were hit and miss with some of the users in game. Now that the mods are more designed around orbs of power generation and how easy it is to create them, the following weapon can stay at max power easily for the user for longer. Even without the dedicated weapon buff provided, the weapon is still get a high damage rate once its effect is active and this overall allows players to use the weapon within whatever build they have in mind. I would also recommend you have a heavy weapon that can be used against bosses and combatants just so you can create orbs of power easily when your main prime is out of use. The combination from the DSC raid with reconstruction is a great pick to have for how balanced the weapon is or even the retrofit escape aid and corrective measure are a great out choice to have for easy orbs creation. If none of these are viable then add on whatever machine gun you want but then make sure you have the given cipher mod to help back you up. The wave splitter turned into an absolute beast thanks to the lightful modern changes. More ways to generate orbs combined with them being the main source for armor charges means more uptime on supercharged battery. This combined with the season of volatile rounds after orb pickup, an extra heavy ammo chance on void kills via bricks from beyond seasonal mod makes the wave splitter a jack of all trades. Add claim capabilities, anti-champion slayer, secondary mods DPS. Check, check and check. Wave Splitter used to be the forgotten child amongst an already forgotten group of weapons, that being exotic trace rifles. But now this isn't the case and is absolutely amazing. The flexibility and overall uses on the field allows players to cover many roles within the content they are in and when combined with an effective heavy as well, you can pull off some high damage numbers that weren't able to be achieved before. The continuous overcharge beam allows us to stay on target for long until we run out but by adding on orbs of power and the rest of the damage buffs we can turn the weapon into a laser which can rip through combatants to champions with little effort for the user. Don't forget, with Nezorak's apply to the build as well, we'll also be getting energy back for abilities. This means that we can use our debuff grenades on the boss and as long as we have a way to create all of the power, we can pull in that 126% damage buff against many bosses to bosses alike. Of course, the benefit of the setup allows users to switch to whatever exotic we like and not lose the overall damage build still offers. This means if you don't like what I have shown, then that's not a big problem. Overall, Wave Split has entered the golden age for users, and as long as you maintain the orb multiplier that the build needs, it will serve you well in the end game. But what do you think? So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on the content shared then please leave a comment below while at the same time if you enjoy the content and want more of these videos in the future then leave a like and a sub while here. I will leave a dim link for the build below and if you want more stuff like this then I have a playlist available covering all types of builds you desire. It was great sharing today's video with you all, I hope to see you again soon.